Here on Debaco University, we're going to be investigating some organic forms of nitrogen, which are important for gl plant growth and production. All right, let's get into organic and nitrogen fertilizer options for cannabis production. So first off, options for organic growers. Uh, there are nitrogen only others and nitrogen dominant ratio ones. So some of these contain only nitrogen, some contain blends of other nutrients as well, which is important to take into consideration. We we'll cover blood meal, fish uh, fertilizers, bat guano, as well as manure in this video. So let's start with the blood meal first. Well, blood meal is a byproduct of the slaughter um, house industry, waste basically. It's one of the highest concentrations of nitrogen in any non-synthetic source. E even though it is organic, it can be over applied, so keep that in mind, and it can burn plants due to the excessive ammonia that would be produced. Now for the fertilizers here, I've tried to provide kind of, uh, and there's a link in the description to where I got the source from, but the typical NPK analysis, the time of release, the pros, cons, as well as application rate that's recommended. Now, blood meal is uh, 1200. I've also seen it's 13, sometimes 00, uh, but it's basically all nitrogen with little or no amount of phosphorus or potassium. So again, that's a great thing. It can be on the more expensive side uh, as if you're looking for pound of nitrogen to dollar amount. Just keep that in mind. Then we get into different types of fish fertilizer. So there's fish emulsion, there's hydrolyzed liquid fish, there's fish meal, there's fish powder. There's a whole bunch of different ones here and I'll kind of break these uh, down so you can understand that while fish fertilizer is one general category, there's a couple other more specifics. So starting with the first one, fish emulsion. Well, what fish emulsion is, is kind of the infamous for its foul smell. Uh, emulsions are soluble liquid fertilizers that have been heat and acid processed, basically from fished waste. And we can see again, all the same information provided here. You can see typical, as is these are 511, this listed typically as 522. So again, when you're looking at applications, be mindful of what particular fertilizer you might have be purchased yourself. Then the liquid fish, or en enzymatically digested fish, and probably of this, of all the enzymatically digested liquid fish products, Neptune's Harvest is probably the most name that most people would recognize. And this is a digest of the nutrients from fish wastes instead of using heat and acids. So enzymes are using to kind of break, break this process down. It retains more of the proteins, enzymes, vitamins, and micronutrients than emulsions do. This is why this is typically so commonly used within uh, growers. And you can see the typical ratio compared to these, a little different. So again, just mindful of the product you're using. Then we have fish meal, which is, fish meal is basically ground and heat dried fish waste. Uh, a little more variable, a little bit harder sometimes to kind of uh, mix with water, though it is water soluble. It may take a little warm water, a little more agitation to get that into solution, so it can be utilized uh, and given to your plants. Then we get to fish powder which uh, fish powder is dried with heat and turned into water-soluble powdered form. Uh, it's, high, it's high source of nitrogen, can be mixed into solution and injected to an irrigation system. However, while fish powder is supposedly able to be injected into an irrigation system, if you are going to be utilizing that, make sure you have a filter because some fish powders are more soluble than others and some may be too large of particles and may clog drip emitter lines, for example. So be sure you have that filter to protect yourself so your fish powder doesn't go through and clog all your potential irrigation lines. Then we get into bat guano. So bat guano or feces harvested from caves and is a um, kind of a powered, uh, powerful powdered product. Uh, the powder can be applied directly to the soil or mixed with water. So it can be applied in irrigation water for delivery to the plants. Again, make sure you have a filter there. Um, so you're preventing any clogging of any drip lines. And again, also looking at, you know, the past fertilizer with the, the fish here, uh, fish meal, keep in mind there are potassium and phosphorus numbers as well. And we see that also with the bat guano. Keep in mind there is cost associated with bat guano, it can be on the more expensive side. You also have to think about the carbon footprint it took to get that fertilizer to you. And then lastly, we have manure. So for manure, uh, it can come from cows, sheep, poultry, horses, typically used as a soil amendment. It contains more nitrogen, and because of this, it's often used as the main uh, reason for adding manure to soil. However, manure's uh, nutrient content is small compared to other chemical fertilizers. It can also help with soil structure. Keep in mind that the nutrient values will depend on the source of the animal, the bedding used, and the amount included. 
So coarse manure is going to be a little different from cow, from sheep, and poultry. Typically, chicken manure will be your most nutrient-dense uh, for comparison, uh, so keep that in mind. Also with manures, if you are adding it to a soil amendment, that may require to add higher amounts. First year, you'll get a lot of nitrogen boost, which will be great, but the phosphorus and potassium can reside in that soil for a number of years, may causing you in years to come to switch to a pure nitrogen source because the phosphorus and nitrogen sticking in that soil and getting the benefits of the soil properties. Don't keep adding manure every year because your phosphorus numbers will likely become in the excessive and potentially toxic range, which could contaminate fresh groundwater.